Today's video, we're going to cover electric drills. One of the most handy tools for the do-it-yourselfer. And a couple of things we're going to cover on this video for the home handy person. Uh, a couple of different types of drills. One thing I want to talk about is the reversing function of a drill. And I also want to discuss uh, the chuck, the drill chuck here. This is the chuck which holds the drill bit. And I want to talk a little bit about keyed chucks. This is the key. goes in there like this to loosen or tighten the drill bit. And we're going to talk about drills that are keyless. You hand tighten the chuck. This is a drill like that. You hold it here, loosen or tighten it there for the drill to pop out. They're great, they're convenient, but I'm going to talk about some of the benefits of the chuck that has the key. We're also going to discuss a little bit about some handy dandy accessories for drills, grinding discs, and things like that. And when you get your drill, make sure that you read over the safety instructions by the manufacturer of your just want to mention for the rest of this video, I do not do product placement in my videos. So if you see a manufacturer's name on a tool, it just happens to be the tool I'm using at the time. I use tools made by all sorts of different companies. So let's discuss the drill chuck for a moment here. This is the chuck. And the jaws of the drill chuck here are what hold the drill bit. So, if I hold, this one is, and this one is the keyed one, by the way. These grooves here are for the key to fit in, and the bonus of the key is that it get, you can get a lot tighter grip on a drill bit if you're using a drill with a keyed chuck, because you can put it in like that, It'll be a hole or something like that to lock it in place and then you turn the key and the, you can get a lot more force with one of these especially if you put a little extra helper on the end of this for more leverage and get a really good grip on the bit that's not such a big deal if you're just doing little uh, home handy person type stuff but the general rule of thumb is going to be the larger the bit the greater the force that's going to be required to keep the bit in place. So if you're using some pretty drill, big uh, drill bits, you're probably out better off with a chuck like this that's keyed and you can get a lot more force to keep the bit in place. This on the other hand is a chuck with no key. No grooves there, you just hold the that part of the drill like that and then you tighten going or loosen going counterclockwise as looking from the front of the there we go we would go counterclockwise to loosen that and the bit would come out I'll show you on the other drill because that's the one I'm going to be using so basically we look at the front I hold the chuck back here as we turn this I'm holding the chuck see if I can get a better view on this. As I turn this counterclockwise, look at the jaws here, and you'll see as I spin that, the jaws are getting much farther apart. So that's the logic here as we, do, we uh, make the bigger, put a bigger drill bit in there, we have a smaller bit, spin it that way. So, I'm going to grab a bit, and we'll put it in there and briefly discuss bits you get a set of bits I find you're a lot better off if you can find a sale and get a whole uh, selection of bits as we can see this one here goes from 3 8 large bits there down to the small guys 1 8 1 16 I like to buy them in kits like this to buy them individually I find it's a lot more expensive so you get all sorts of uh, deals if you watch out for them. Bits are generally 
pretty cheap. All sorts of different little holders for them too. So we're going to grab a, a random bit here, 1560 forts. We're going to put the shank of the bit into our drill. That's, the jaws aren't open wide enough. So let's open up, spin our chuck there, drop that in there. Spin that closed. I don't want to get the part of the bit that's got the cutting edge down in into the jaws. So I'm keeping it out a little bit there. And by the way, read over your owner's manual for the instructions for your uh, drill. You want to use safety glasses and that type of thing when you're drilling too. A lot of times it'll be wood chips or chips of whatever it is that you're drilling flying all over the place. Okay, now if this was a keyless chuck that would be as tight as we could get that bit. And that would probably be fine for a lot of the little jobs you'd be doing. But in this case, with the keyed one, we're going to take our key, put it in the little hole there, line up the grooves in the key and the grooves in the chuck, and see if I can do this without hitting my tripod. Turn that, looking for the front of the drill, turning that clockwise to tighten it up. Okay, now that bit is tight in there. Okay, so now we have our drill bit locked in our chuck. Let's discuss some of the basic uh, functionality of the drill. Obviously, I'm just gonna, don't do this, I'm just uh, going to show you here for purposes of illustration. There's the trigger, you don't want to hold the drill like this, but you hit the button, the drill operates. Um, in this particular case, there's a hammer function. This drill can be used to drill masonry. I don't know if you can see the little picture of the hammer over here, so when it's over that way, it's for drilling masonry. Flick it back this way, little picture of the bit. It's just for normal drilling. Um, on this side of it, we have a lock. I don't rec recommend you using this, but this is the idea here. We operate the drill, hit the lock, So you notice I took my finger off the trigger, normally. You hit the trigger of the drill and it stops that there button. You operate that and it locks the drill uh, into operating mode. I don't recommend using it. Um, and that's basically most of the buttons. Variable speed drills, they're nice sometimes. Anyway, let's drill something. Oh, before we drill, I forgot to mention one of the most important buttons here. On this drill, you'll find it in your operating instructions for the particular drill you have, is the forward and reverse button. So, looking at it here, we see the little arrow going backwards. So if we flick our button that way, it's reversing. It's going to unscrew a screw, or drill out. And on this side of the drill, we see our little arrow facing forward, so if we put the button that way, it's in forward drilling mode. Okay, so we have our bit installed in the drill. You choose where you're going to drill. We got our hammer lock off. I got my reversing mode in forward. Hold your bit safely, hold, hold your drill safely, and basically place it. And there you go. A tip uh, you can do if you're, particularly if you're drilling with a larger bit and you don't want to uh, lose track of your surface and having your, have your bit start to dance around as you're holding it in place, is you can drill a pilot hole. So you drill a small hole with a small bit and then follow that with your 
larger bit. Or if it doesn't have to be all that exact, what I do a lot of times, I'll just take a nail, make a little mark, just enough to keep the to get the end of the drill bit in. Now this bit I'm going to use, unfortunately, is really dull, so I'm not going to make you watch me drill through the whole two by four there. But that's the uh, where I made my mark, placed the end of my bit in there. There it is. And away you go. Another little tip you can do if you're drilling, particularly say in an area where you're not really sure what's behind the surface that you're drilling. For instance, if this was a stud in a house and you were drilling some holes to run some uh, Cat5 or some wiring for your television or internet or whatever, and you weren't really sure was what was in here, you don't want to drill more than you have to. You might hit an electrical wire or something. What you can do is put a little piece of tape on your drill as far as you want to drill in. Don't put too much tape on because you're just going to have to get it off your bit. So for instance if I wanted to go, well that's a 2 by 4 so an inch and a half, but say if I wanted to drill just slightly beyond that, I marked it there, then you got a little guide, right? So I know I'm not going to go any more than about, say, a half an inch or so beyond that stud. Slow it down. The great thing is, once you have your drill and you start using it, is uh, the amount of accessories you can get for the a drill. You can get wire brushes like this for cleaning off metal, great around body work. If you're doing body work on vehicles, surface prep kit like this, <clears throat> they usually have the little attachments to put into the end of your drill, sanding discs, all that type of thing. Some miscellaneous things like this unit here, I wouldn't have bought this, except for it was uh, up in Canada, it was on sale for like I think about $8. Normally around, no, oh, I think it was 30 or so, and this is basically a uh, chuck and a unit that will turn the standard drill into a hammer drill and uh, that's if you're drilling concrete or something like that. Uh, speaking of which, if you get into that kind of thing, generally you go to buy the a bit, you'll see something like that. It should be marked ma a masonry drill bit, so that's if you're um, drilling concrete, masonry, brick, whatever. And you got your general little drill bit kits themselves and this little unit here I got the other day I think this was only like 10 bucks or something these are great because you got all sorts of different attachments in them here's here's a Robertson type bit great if you're doing decking something like that uh, you want to screw down the decking all sorts of different heads in there you got a Phillips head uh, for drywall screws and that type of thing and I found my decking screw, there it is, the Robertson head on it, the Robertson head from our little kit over here. Like I say, this is one of my personal favorites. Just makes screwing down decking so much easier. That type of thing.